Good afternoon, ladies. It's exciting to see you both this afternoon. Uh, first, I just want to introduce ourselves just really quickly and get into this social capital discussion that we want to have here. Uh, first off, I'm Chrissy Getke. I'm the communications coordinator for the Central Minnesota Community Foundation, and I'll just lead into Carol. Hi, I'm Carol Turnell, the executive director at Central Minnesota Community Foundation as well. Hello, and I'm Kathy Gronko, Director of Community Programs with the Central Minnesota Community Foundation. Thank you so much for joining me today, ladies. So basically, we just want to learn a little bit about what social capital is. We're hearing a lot about it on our Facebook page this month. If anyone has been paying attention to some of our posts, we've also been talking about it throughout the year of 2020 and into 2021. So I'm just going to jump right into it. What is social capital? Well, it's really a connection that individuals have with one another and the community. And essentially it's a network of relationships that give a sense of uh, community, a sense of connection and belonging. Carol often refers to it as bridging and bonding. Carol, do you wanna share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so social capital is built on mutual respect, trust and reciprocity, and it's found in almost any relationship. It can be a bridge between people from different races, ethnic, age, or income groups, or it can be a bond be between people who have common interests. Very interesting. So now that we know a little bit about what social capital is, how do we go about measuring it? And why is this thing important? Why is social capital important? Well, it's really important because it's a source of power and influence that really helps people to get by and get ahead. It's not just, you know, the old saying, it's not just who you know, it's, or what you know, but it is who you know. Um, and uh, that really relates to the powerful effects and the importance of social capital. Right, and they find that when um, social capital is high in a community, people feel more connected, more connected to each other, more con connected to the community that they call their home. That's really interesting. And I know I mentioned it just a little bit earlier that we've been focusing a lot on it on Facebook this month on CMCF. If you haven't noticed, earlier this week, we started our Sprouting Seeds in Communities contest. So it's a grant making contest and we have five nonprofits that are participating in it. They were selected by the CMCF team. They submitted a video and went through that process. And all of their programs are focusing on social capital. You can also find some more information on our website, communitygiving.org slash sprouting seeds. So that's what we're kind of focusing on for the first part of the month. But we also have a webinar that's coming up next week that's focusing on social capital as well. Can you ladies tell me a little bit about that webinar? The webinar is Tuesday at two o'clock, so please join us. We're going to be sharing about our social capital survey results. Every five years since 2004, the Community Foundation has done a survey of individuals to find out what our social capital level is. It's no surprise that this year, the capital, social capital is less than prior years in many areas. But we're going to look in uh, more detail about volunteerism and um, about how people feel connected in the community. The survey will also um, show us the levels of uh, trust and civic engagement in our community as well. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, ladies. Just once again, if you're interested in checking out the Sprouting Seeds in Our Communities contest, all that information can be found on our Facebook as well as communitygiving.org slash sprouting seeds. And the upcoming webinar is Tuesday, May 11th at 2 p.m. You can register for that webinar on our website, communitygiving.org under our events tab. Thank you so much, ladies.